Hello, Maverick fans. Welcome to another edition of the Mav Puck Cast. I'm Jason. I am here to talk some hockey. John's <laughs> here with me. Not exactly what we hoped for up in Grand Forks. Uh, it certainly wasn't what we were hoping for uh, up in Grand Forks on March 3rd and 4th, but I also don't think we're particularly surprised by this outcome. It is hard to go into Ralph Engelstad Arena anytime and try to pick up uh, pick up a win or two. So uh, uh, going into that Friday game, uh, there were certain things that we knew about our team. Number one, sophomore forward Ty Mueller was out of the game with an upper body injury that he sustained on Saturday night against St. Cloud State. So we knew we were going to be without one of our top offensive threats for this series up at North Dakota. Yeah, and that you knew that was going to that was going to hurt this team. They're not deep. You don't roll another guy in there and, and feel like, you know, you're, you're not losing something there. 136 in the first period on Friday night, Jackson Coons for North Dakota gets the scoring started. I always like for UNO to get that first goal, but I'll tell you what, UNO I thought played really well early on in that game. And I thought it was competitive throughout uh, 508 in the first period. Our guy, Tyler Reese, uh, gets the tying goal with assists, Jimmy Glenn and Cam Berg. Uh, great goal. He picked up the rebound off of Drew to Ritter. What did you think of Ty's goal? What did you think being tied one-to-one -one at that point? Much better than having to play the rest of that period down a goal. I, I'd say that's really kind of outside of the second period that we'll talk about. Like UNO's MO this weekend was just don't let it get away from you and stay in it. And, you know, when we were trailing, we typically weren't trailing you know, outside of that second period Friday night. So, you know, it's good that they responded well. It's good that they kept their heads. This has been a resilient team this year. It's good to see them fight back in this game and, and you know, make a, make a contest out of it. I was impressed. These are two really close teams. They match up really well together. Uh, they play a similar style. It was interesting to see North Dakota struggle at times, but have success at times and UNO struggled at times and, had success at times. Ten freshmen on the roster this season. It's always an adventure, uh, but 432 into the second period, Gavin Hain gets a power play goal for North Dakota, and then that's followed up in the latter stages of that period, 1331. Uh, Dylan James, who had a nice weekend for North Dakota, puts the Fighting Hawks up 3-1, to one. They leave the period up three to one. What'd you think going into that third period on last week's episode of the podcast? You said, we don't want to spot these guys three or four goals. Yeah, it was proverbial. We have to get the next one, you know, and luckily Sullivan comes through for us in that first 10 minutes of the third period, gets that first one off the board, takes us back within one. Uh, and, you know, you're really feeling good at that point in time that, you know, we're not out of this. Like, obviously you'd rather be in the lead, we're trying to get that next one now. And then I thought that really helped the young kids just stay focused. I thought the momentum shifted at that point. Uh, certainly shout out to Jacob Slipek, uh, who kind of did the heavy lifting on that Sullivan goal. He fired that, uh, fired that shot in from the points. Great position for UNO to be in. And then at 16.05 uh, in the third period, uh, the veteran Jake Pavanka ties the game up for UNO, assist to uh, Matt Miller and Victor Mancini on that. Uh, a great position for UNO to be in late in the third period. And then the fireworks started, Jason, 1657 in the period. Dylan James, unassisted goal. That was a tough goal for UNO to give up. Uh, it was keyed by a neutral zone turnover by Jake Pavanka. So we thought maybe we were going to lose this thing four to three in regulation, but with about 30 seconds left in the game, Matt Miller ties it up for UNO and the game goes to overtime. What did you feel about UNO headed to overtime up there in Grand Forks against North Dakota? The deflating thing was that North Dakota goal coming so closely after we tied it up. We've had that problem in the past. Especially early on in the season, we struggled with some of those, like we would get a push and we would get a game tying goal. And then they make one mental error, one basic mistake, you know, one misread and pucks in our net and we're back to, you know, losing a game basically. So 
it's tough. And I'm sure that the guys kind of hung their heads a little bit moving into the playoffs and stuff. We've got to clean things up. Uh, we've got to be smarter with the puck. We've got to be sure of getting it out. Those types of things are the things that, that ended up hurting us. But then you get just that high emotion of you know scoring late in a game. And usually most announcers will tell you going into overtime, advantage is almost always with the team that scored last. And so you really felt good about if UNO could keep pushing, that they'd find a way to get that extra point in overtime. But unfortunately, overtime doesn't last very long. A minute six into overtime, Ethan Frisch scores the game-winning goal for North Dakota. And you talked about mistakes. Uh, a defensive zone turnover by Camberg uh, was what set up that goal for North Dakota. You know, over the last, gosh, 10, 15 years, we've talked about the March Mavs. We've talked about how this team performs in the month of March. Hockey's very different in this little sliver of the season and then the postseason at this point. And uh, little mistakes can be the difference between a win or a loss. We did get a point because the game went to overtime, which made things really interesting uh, in the NCHC race. We were having fun or maybe not so much fun on Saturday trying to figure out what UNO needed to do to finish in second place in the conference. UNO did not get a power play goal during uh, that Friday night game. Going into Saturday night, Jake Kuharski was back in net for UNO. I was glad to see him. You know, this time of year, I sometimes think that those veteran uh, veteran net minders uh, find a way to get it done. Uh, there was no scoring through two periods uh, in this game. Uh, the vibe of the game really reminded me of uh, – postseason hockey in the NCAA. Just a close back and forth game those two periods. Uh, Lots of opportunities for both teams, but 436 into that third period, uh, UND's Ethan Frisch gets the scoring started. Uh, The score was keyed off a defensive zone turnover by Johnny Tychonic. Yeah, and that's what we talked about Friday is just one mistake. And, you know, it's it's not even... Sometimes the the glaring mental errors or the bad passes or the the blind dumps up the board types of things that we've seen. You know, this one was just unfortunately lost an edge. Puck goes to the middle, right to North Dakota. Those those types of turnovers, you know, that close to being out of the zone and into a transition game, uh, they they hurt you. Those are the, that's the reason why coaches preach you can't turn the puck over at the lines because. Those are the types of situations where you're starting to move and everyone's thinking we're transitioning uh, and you're just shocked to find out that the puck's headed the other way and everything's in front of you at that point in time. And so you're just chasing. Um, and that's, that's what we had. And I, I, you know, I felt it was really just like the, the goal, the last uh, North Dakota goal in regulation on Friday, which was you're in the third period, you know, you made a mistake. Are you going to just wallow in your misery for the mistake? Or are you going to, you know, go out there and say, nope, I'm going to get it back. You know, and luckily, about three minutes later, Omaha ties it up. Yeah, Matt Miller has really uh, proven to be clutch uh, as of late. Before Matt Miller's goal, uh, Jake Kuharski had the opportunity to stop a penalty shot, which was uh, an interesting sequence of events in the game. But yeah, Miller ties things up down low, uh, third period from a pass uh, by uh, Jack Randall. So a good position for UNO to be in uh, in the uh, first half of that third period. But late, 16:58 in the third, UND's Chris Jandrick gets the game-winning goal on uh, what turned out to be a, a controversial play that looked like Jake Kuharski was interfered with by uh, UND forward Jake Schmaltz. What did you think of that sequence of event? We talk about a lot of interesting penalties uh, called by NCHC refs. Did you think that that was interference on Jake Kuharski? I, I could really see it going either way. So it was it was hard to, to kind of anticipate. I know everyone around us was saying, you know, no goal, obvious goaltender interference. I said it was going to stand, you know, and mostly just because it's NCHC. I just didn't think they wanted another overtime game. The weird part for me, I think, is that the announcers, at least on Midco, focused on the stick of the North Dakota player making contact with Kuharski. And if it was the first time that that had happened, either way, 50-50 coming flip, what do the refs want to say there, right? You know, was that enough to kind of 
impede his ability to play his position. The the part that I struggle with is that earlier in the game, North Dakota got a penalty for high sticking the goaltender when the stick hit Kowarski in the head. What I don't understand, and I would really love an explanation for the refs because maybe that wasn't what they were looking at or something. You make that call earlier saying that that's a penalty. And then here it is directly before goaltender and it's not a penalty and it's not a reason to say that he can't play his position. I'm really confused as to why those two opinions exist by the same people in the same game. All of the camera angles that Midco Sports had, which they had some terrific angles of that. Uh, all Gosh, could we get angles like that at Baxter, please? Like... Oh my gosh, they had so many looks at things. And I'm like, yeah, I, I get to understand the game now on TV. And the, the commentators are showing like eight different replays of it, and frame by frame stop. And I'm like, see, this is what I'm used to when I watch NHL broadcasts. It was terrific to see all those angles. Uh, it was terrific uh, to hear uh, Jake Brandt and Alex Heinert analyze them. One of the other interesting things uh, on that goal was that uh, Brock Bremer appeared to break a stick. Uh, and I saw the video clip. Sam Spomer had it on Twitter, but Bremer's stick broke and you could see him skating off the ice. And that really did uh, open up. Uh, it did open up a lane for Chris Jandrick uh, to get that goal. So just one of those, again, one of those fluky things, a tough way to lose because I thought UNO played really well on Friday night. I thought they played well on Saturday nights. I thought they were in a position to win both of those games. But as you mentioned, just a few mistakes ended up costing them both games. We did end up in third place in the conference. We did not end up in second place in the conference uh, because of the outcome on Saturday nights, which means we'll be playing North Dakota again, which Jason and I are just thrilled to talk about. And we'll be talking about that uh, later. In 23 of the last 25 games between these two teams, uh, the team that scored first has won. Uh, Omaha matches its best finish in the NCHC at third. Uh, It was Omaha's most NCHC wins, 13. Uh, They were one point shy of hitting a record number of conference points in the NCHC. So this was a good regular season. For UNO, and I've got to ask you, looking back at these two games this weekend, Jason, who is your player of the week? I'm going to go maybe a little bit off the board, maybe not, but I really like the play of Slipek this weekend. I thought that he was involved, engaged, you know, obviously he gets the one assist. Uh, He had some opportunities. I like to see him, you know, take the next step. Uh, and really kind of drive play a little bit more. But it was, I, I really liked, you know, his play this weekend and then kind of his involvement on the team. I really wanted last regular season game, you know, not to just pick something that was kind of you know, obvious. Uh, so you've got a couple obvious ones I feel like you have to pick from now. Yeah, you know, that assist that he got on the uh, Sullivan goal, on Friday night was really critical, very, very important. Uh, I think of all the freshman forwards that uh, came in this season, uh, he has really been the most pleasant surprise. Uh, Been a terrific player for UNO throughout his freshman campaign, and I think we both uh, expect big things from him uh, coming up the next few seasons. So I like that pick. And like you, I'm going to be a little different this weekend. Now, the obvious pick should be Matt Miller, right? Had two goals <laughs> right. and an assist this weekend. Uh, he has 13 goals and 12 assists on the season, so we should pick him. But I'm going to pick Caden Bolson. Uh, he played a tough physical game on Saturday nights, 4-12 into that third period. He had a great opportunity to score. You could tell he wanted the goal. There was this penalty that was called on him in the neutral zone, and Jason loves to talk about penalties, so I'm going to have him talk about this. Looked like a clean hit to me, Jason, uh, but they uh, but they sent him to the box with uh, five seconds left in the second period on Saturday nights. What did you think of that call by the NCHC officials? It, it was a clean hit. It was they made that call based on the situation and what could have happened, and not what did happen. It sucks because we get this with with NCHC way too much. Like, call the game that's in front of you. Be consistent. 
We talked about it on the goal. Like you called it in the same game. Obviously it should be still a penalty in the third period, even when it leads to a goal. You know, that's just not what we get. What we get is the, oh, that's, you know, a player crossing the middle of the ice. And so that's on the other player to apparently, you know, pull up and not hit the player. But Caden doesn't leave his feet. He doesn't jump into it. He doesn't even lean really into it. The the few angles that I saw, like, it doesn't even look like he's leaning to get, you know, shoulder-shoulder contact and ends up shoulder-head contact. He doesn't make contact with the head. It's just, it's a violent hit because the guy's coming east-west and Caden's going north-south. And it's just two guys skating and Caden saying, I can make a legal check. And he did. And, you know, it's unfortunate that they can't look at the, like they went in and replayed it. You know, I know they were looking for head contact and stuff, but it's unfortunate that there's no way for them to go in and look at that and go, yeah, there was nothing there. So we need to take this off the board and take them out. Um, Once they went in there, it was two minutes. He was getting a penalty, you know, and he ended up calling it for interference which is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard because you can't interfere with the puck carrier's ability to carry the puck. (laughs) It's just, oh, so many things about that was just like, uh, this is stupid. Yeah, I thought he had a great game. Uh, I'd love to see him get on the score sheet a little bit more. That hasn't been his role so far, but uh, I like the way he played. So yeah, two completely unorthodox picks there. Not the outcome we were hoping for, but uh, an entertaining series nonetheless. Uh, That's what you got to go out of this with MAV fans. I know that there are a lot of MAV fans upset on social media, but it is what it is. So you got to regroup and get ready for the first round of the playoffs. But we had the opportunity to watch both of the games this weekend, Jason, at Exarban Cinema. They have hosted uh, UNO hockey watch parties in the past. I think 2015 was the last time uh, when UNO made uh, the NCAA Midwest Regional that year and made the Frozen Four uh, in Boston, Massachusetts was the last time they hosted a watch party. Great to have them doing it again. Uh, the watch parties were both nights, uh, March 3rd and 4th for this series against North Dakota. Uh, the hosts were the Athletic Department, the UNO Alumni Association, and MavPuck.com, Jason. We were on Woo-hoo. the little graphic to promote this uh, <clears throat> so that was quite an honor thank you mike west for uh putting us on the graphic and certainly uh exarban cinema hosted you could get popcorn and the snacks that they serve at the theater you could also get food from uh backlot tap house which is owned by the barstow family who own exarban cinema they had swag bag giveaways i missed both of them because i was out uh in the lobby during intermission uh, but Bridget got some video, so if you're watching on YouTube, we will uh, we will share that. You guys didn't win a swag bag on Saturday, did you? Of course not. We don't win things. I know. I'll tell you, you guys weren't there on Friday because uh, your daughter Lexi was uh, participating in a youth hockey tournament on Friday evening. But uh, there were some North Dakota fans who managed to show up <laughs> at the watch party. So I don't know who was on the list that uh, UNO sent out, but. We all thought that was very interesting. So it doesn't matter whether it's an in-person game at Baxter Arena or a watch party at a movie theater. North Dakotas will show up when North Dakota is playing. So, uh, so yes, we had some North Dakota fans there for that game. But a very nice event. I would like to thank UNO for doing that. We hadn't done it for a long time. I know fans enjoy that event. Uh, it's fun to get together uh, and commune with uh, fans at the theater, Jason. Yeah, I think it's a great opportunity for fans to connect. And I know from having you guys over to watch games and uh, it's just, it's more fun. Hockey's more fun with friends. So it's always good to have people come over or get together at some place and watch a game together. And I think it's great that Exarban Cinema was willing to be the host of that and say, you know, we'll put it on the big screen and you can really take it in. So, yeah, so kudos to them for supporting it. Kudos from everyone at UNO, the Alumni Foundation stuff, for coordinating all that stuff. It's, as a fan, really appreciate it. Mav Puck, you guys rock. Thanks for putting your name on the brochure. We do what we can, Jason. 
And speaking of this upcoming playoff series against North Dakota at Baxter Arena here later on this week, playoff tickets for season ticket holders, of course, are included in your season ticket package. We paid for those many moons ago, and we've been getting that playoff ticket credit for years. So those tickets are in your MyMavs account if you get your tickets digitally. Uh, if you have your tickets printed by the box office, they should be available there. So contact the Baxter Arena box office if you get physical tickets. Uh, if you don't have tickets to the game, uh, tickets for this weekend, single game tickets are $17 per seat, uh, upper bowl and lower bowl. I think that's a great price for tickets uh, for this playoff series. You can buy tickets online at OMAVS dot com slash ticks uh student ticket update uh, a couple weeks ago when jason and i talked about tickets we weren't sure uh if students would have to pay for tickets because in the past they have had to pay for nchc playoff tickets when we have had home playoff series i think in 2015 which was the last time we had a home playoff series students had to pay five dollars to get in uh, but there are free student vouchers available uh, you have to donate uh, canned food or make a $1 donation to get those. I mean, I guess if you're making the $1 donation or donating a can, it's not exactly free, but we're calling it a free student voucher with a canned food donation or a $1 donation. And donations go uh, to the MAV pantry, one voucher per student per game. Uh, you can get vouchers at select uh on-campus locations Wednesday and Thursday of the week that this podcast is released. So we encourage students to get out there. Uh, it's nice that uh, it's nice that UNO was able to work out a deal to get the students uh, inexpensive tickets since uh, students normally get into uh, games at Baxter Arena for free. And if you're listening, get your tickets early because North Dakota travels. And I don't care what fans say about it being a down year and blah, 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 BS. Like, I'm tired of seeing more green in Baxter than Omaha fans. And so get your tickets, plan on coming. If you want to watch some good hockey, this is going to be some really good hockey. These teams have played four games, all of them being close games. Uh, we have, what, two overtime games, I think, right? Yeah, exactly. I think uh, some of these games over the years have been absolutely terrific for UNO, and we have not won a home playoff series since we were in the CCHA. And so that would have been back, I think our last season in the CCHA off the top of my head was the 2009-2010 season. So it's been a long time. You know, some of these students were in preschool the last time, you know, UNO had success uh, in the postseason conference tournament. So, yeah, we've had some terrific games, and we really need the students to get out there, make some noise, create some atmosphere, uh, because as Jason mentioned, North Dakota fans travel, and they're going to come out with both barrels blazing, and uh, we need all the fan support we can get. But as we talk about playoffs, Jason and I, Need to look at the final NCHC standings of the season and talk about uh, the first round matchups. Certainly, the the one that we uh, that we knew was going to happen: Denver, who is the number one overall seed, will be taking on Miami next weekend. Uh, the uh, two seven uh, matchup will be Western Michigan and Colorado College. We were hoping to be the number two seed taking on Colorado College, but uh, the hockey gods were not aligned with that, uh, that way of thinking. Uh, Omaha is the number three seed, of course, and we will be taking on North Dakota again. Uh, and then St. Cloud and Minnesota Duluth will also play for the second uh, weekend in a row here uh, as the four or five seed. Jason, looking at these matchups, looking at uh, our conference mates and some of those matchups, what do you think about these series as we're looking at the first weekend of the playoffs? I think there's going to be some good, good games in there. Uh, I think the one that people will overlook and just kind of slough off is going to be Denver-Miami. I don't see how Miami hangs with Denver. There's nothing about that team that I look at going either one, Denver can't handle, or two, Denver's not better at it anyways. Um, like I'll take Denver in that one 
all day, any day. Western Michigan, Colorado College, I don't know. Like, Colorado College is playing with a chip on their shoulder. They do not like how they played against Denver this last weekend. I mean, you've got to go to Kalamazoo, and that's going to be the, the challenge for Cairo College. It's, uh, you know, that arena is going to be loud. Uh, it's a very tough place to play to begin with and tough place to play, tougher place to play in the playoffs. Um, so I'll take Western Michigan on that one. The Duluth, St. Cloud, like, man, those are two teams that just beat up on each other. So I'll take Duluth only because they're perennial like upset factors in everything. And then just, I'll take Duluth. It'll be interesting to see if they get through. Well, yeah, it is going to be interesting. And like you, I think uh, Denver will be able to dispatch uh, with Miami in two games, but I mean, who knows? <laughs> Maybe Aunt Miami has it in them to pull off one upset. I don't think you, I, or any other college hockey fan thinks that's going to happen. So I think Denver's the safe bet. Uh, I do think that Western Colorado College series could be pretty interesting this coming weekend. You know, back in 2019, Colorado College went on the road and upset Western Michigan to make it to the NCHC frozen faceoff. Bridget and I were up at the frozen faceoff for Colorado College's uh, appearance in that series. So I think that one potentially could be interesting. A lot of it, I think, depends on the status of uh, Caden Embarico, the talented freshman goaltender for Colorado College. Uh, he has had uh, injury issues, so it'll be interesting to see whether it's him or Matt Vernon in that. As you talked about, that St. Cloud State, Minnesota Duluth series, uh, that series sounded very entertaining that they played to end the regular season up at St. Cloud State this last weekend. So I'm going to be really interested to see how that series is. And as we talked about before, I never underestimate a Scott Sandlin coach team in the postseason. And I do think that this Minnesota Duluth team has the opportunity and has the potential to upset in that series. So uh, I think it's a flip of a coin. I like your pick. Picking them to upset St. Cloud State should be interesting. Uh, but the series where Jason and I are thrilled to talk about again is the 3 6 matchup. Our UNO Mavericks taking on North Dakota for the second weekend in a row. Jason, we have played North Dakota four times this season, as we do since they are our travel partner in the NCHC. We have not defeated North Dakota. The closest we came was back in November. Uh, we got a shootout win to get the extra conference point uh, against them, but that game was officially a tie. When you look at the pairwise, we are very much on the outside looking in. So we've got to find a way to have success this weekend and probably the week after up there in St. Paul. Certainly players to watch. Same players uh, we encourage you to watch this weekend. Uh, freshman forward Jackson Blake has 15 goals and 25 assists, a very talented player for them. Junior forward Reese Gaber has 19 goals and 15 assists, a player that I thought looked good for them uh, this weekend when we were up in Grand Forks was Dylan James, two goals and one assist on the weekend. He has six goals and eight assists this season. And certainly uh, Michigan State transfer in net, Drew DeRitter played well. Uh, he held UNO to one goal in Saturday's contest. I think to me, the key is this, and you talked about this fact earlier. We play a similar style of hockey to North Dakota. We both like to you know, run up and down the ice. We like to make it a track meet in these games. But if I was the coach, and since we're fans, we can just say whatever we want, Jason, because uh, nothing is on the line for any of us. I'll just say it. I, I would do everything in my power to try to stymie North Dakota um, in the neutral zone as much as we possibly could. I think that they're a team – that look, they've had their struggles this season. And I think that uh, if you can frustrate North Dakota, you can have success against North Dakota. I think that's one factor. I think we need to find a way to get into Drew DeRitter's head this weekend. I don't know what that entails, but I think the coaching staff needs to figure it out. And on Friday night, I would start the veteran Jake Kaharski. I know that fans have loved the play of Simon Lacozzi in this second half, but uh, I'd like to see the, the big veteran in net. It's the postseason. I like to see those veterans uh, have the opportunity in net at this point. And I thought he played really well on Saturday night up at North Dakota. Um, and that's kind of that's kind of my initial thoughts. Uh, it's hard to talk about a team that you played two weekends in a row, but we've 
we've got to find a way to get it done, which might mean we need to shake some things up. I also hope that we get uh, sophomore forward Ty Mueller back in the lineup this weekend. Uh, we could really use him. He always provides an offensive spark. And they also mentioned that two of our guys, Matt Miller and Brock Bemmer, were banged up uh, this weekend at North Dakota. So hopefully they're 100% next weekend, Jason. Well, I think we didn't have Jimmy Glenn on Saturday. Sullivan, we saw a stretch there. So, you know, I think one of the keys is, is the guys, you know, playing through injury and playing hurt. And how do they handle that? Because this is, you know, playoff hockey is, I think I had mentioned on the other podcast, like Mueller, even if he's like 90%, I probably don't play in North Dakota, which we didn't, you know, and, and that's not because we don't need him. That's not because we're not a better team with him. It's just strictly because I'd rather have him a hundred percent for the playoffs than 90% for the last game of the regular season when ultimately it really wasn't a huge deal, you know, for us either way. And so, yeah, I mean, I think he's got to come back. He's probably, my guess is he's probably not going to be 100% and he's going to have to play through it. And this is, you know, this is playoffs. You're, you're from here on out, you're playing for your, your life. If you're done, you're done kind of thing. Um, so these guys really need to time together on it. The other thing is the power play. Like, we do not have a power play goal against North Dakota this year. And we had, what, I think we had seven power plays in one game. Like, I, I mean, you just got to, you have to find a way. This team has to get through on that. You have to make North Dakota worry when they take penalties. Otherwise, they're just going to start playing liberally, challenging us more, because they know that even if they take the penalty, then they'll just be able to kill it off. And it's not a big deal. You know, we had some good opportunities this last series, um, but just couldn't seem to find the back of the net on it. Uh, I would change something up. I would move some things around, move some pieces around something so that we give North Dakota a different look on the power play. Uh, so hopefully the coaching staff's working with them on that because that's got to get solved ASAP uh, with this team. And then I, I mentioned in the breakdown, it's mental mistakes. Can't make those mental mistakes make the simple play get the puck across the line use your transition game you know Chris passes if you can't hit the guy skating on the stick then you're better off probably icing the puck than it is trying some of these danger passes that they do and so they've got to make better mental decisions uh, on the ice and and limit those you know those turnovers and you know, just throwing the puck around. We got hemmed into our zone a few times, in, uh, especially in Saturday's game, probably because we're tired, but we're just throwing the puck to space and not passing the puck to a player. Uh, and those are the types of things that needs to change with this team. Uh, that's what will put North Dakota on their heels. That's what will keep them chasing. And, you know, the best, the best defense is a good offense. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Sustained pressure in our offensive zone is going to be key. We have to remember, this is a new season for everybody. So uh, lots of interesting storylines going on this weekend. As you mentioned, we've got to get our power play clicking again because that's a key part uh, of our offense. And, uh, and as I mentioned earlier, we've got to find a way to stymie these guys. We can't give them a lot of good looks at our nets or they will uh, eventually capitalize on those in a game. So it should be an interesting series. Uh, with that, uh, I'm going to say UNO finds a way to win this series. I, I'm going to say that it's going to go three games. I don't want to have to record a podcast <laughs> on Monday, and I know that that's going to happen. So uh, I'm going to say uh, UNO finds a way to win Friday night. North Dakota wins Saturday night, and then UNO comes and caps off the win. Sunday night uh, and gets us to our first neutral site conference semifinal since the 2000-2001 uh, season when they got to the uh, Joe Lewis Arena in the CCHA playoffs. I will say that if if UNO is going to win this, they're going to win it in three. I These teams have played too many close games. I don't see any way that they're going to be able to do this in two just because I think whoever gets up on Friday is going to have the other teams going to have more motivation on Saturday. I'm with you. I think you put Kaharski in on Friday. I think you see how that game goes and decide. I wouldn't be surprised if we go 
Kowarski, Kowarski, and then give Lakotsi the the Sunday night start and kind of throw a wrench into uh, uh, North Dakota's plans when we get into that game three. Um, but I, I think I'll take mostly because I want to go to Minnesota and I want to see them have success. And, you know, it's been kind of a Cinderella team all year. No one expected UNO to perform at this level. And so I really want to see the guys cap it off with a playoff series win. So I'll say UNO in three as well. It's been a great year for UNO, a great regular season, as you mentioned. Nobody was expecting UNO to do this well. I might have been the most optimistic picking them at five, uh, but that top four finish for the team was absolutely terrific this season. Uh, it's been a it's been great to watch the guys uh, have so much success. Uh, Ten freshmen on the roster this season, certainly unexpected from a young team, but we'd like to see it. And we've got to find a way to break through against North Dakota this weekend, Jason. We got to beat North Dakota. We've got to get it done against these guys because we haven't gotten it done this season. So the guys find a way to break through. Uh, Should be an electric atmosphere at Baxter Arena for those games. Uh, Be sure to follow Mav Puck on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can find links to our social channels at mavpuck.com and it's the postseason now, so there should be a lot of exciting stuff, a lot of exciting game updates this weekend that Bridget will be tweeting out, so that should be a lot of fun. Until the next time, Jason, when we'll be talking about this playoff series, go Mavs. Go Mavs.